Diesel, welcome to Australian Musician. Yeah, thank you. Uh, it's a funny old year. Everyone's been locked down and in isolation. Um, how have you been coping? I've been, you know, coping with my studio, basically. That's my, my coping mechanism. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm happy when I'm making stuff and that's, that's always a given. So that's what I do. I make stuff and it's a good, good kind of distraction for me, I guess, if, if, you know, if I need a distraction. But um, I find that, yeah, watching news, reading too much stuff on my phone, it does not do good things to me. So um, and that's just, you know, I guess uh, you could say, well, that's, you know, so you've decided to stick your head in the sand. Well, I don't know if I'm sticking my head in the sand. I've just, I've really learned a lot about the diet of information and just like the diet of nutrition that I put in my body through my mouth, you know, um, you know, my eyes and ears are, are, are you know, subject to, to that diet with information. And I just, very, I'm really selective about, you know, I'll only read Future Crunch. Uh, it's a blog that comes every month because I know it's fact-checked. Uh, severely fact checked and written by with people of you know high intelligence and I just I don't want to be a subject to you know uh, sensationalized news or just fear mongering just to kind of because fear sells so yeah but I do also want to respect what you know uh, what is actually going on and it is what it is and you can't deny that if this is you know taking impacting families and individuals all over the world so yeah. in a in a mortal mortal way so um yeah that um is all sort of uh the 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 weight of it is is definitely there all the time even though i'm up here in fairyland you know plucking guitars and <laughs> and and uh cajoling uh tracks in my in my daw you know i'm 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 still aware that what's actually really going on but i just i feel you know like this has kind of been a real gift to me actually being able to stop making trips uh, to the airport all the time. Like I always do. And I'm just, I'm here, you know, um, I, yeah, I have to say, I haven't had this sort of sense of um, kind of uh, creative, like, Oh wow, I can just do anything I want today. Or maybe I'll just start that project or do this probably since I moved to New York and had my little studio that I would travel to every day, like a job, you know, I'd ride my bike or I'd blade or take the subway, but up the West side highway, 27 blocks. And, and it was my first experience of like having music, like, like a job, you know, where I would treat it like I'm going to work every day. You know, yeah. that was a different, different thing for me. Yeah. Uh, you're lucky in that uh, you had an album uh, pre-prepared almost. Um, yeah, and I've started another one since because I thought, well, that one's, you know, that's, that's in the bag. So um, I actually started a blues project um, after my son suggested, it's like, Dad, you should make a blues record. You know, I thought, okay, solo blues record. So um, there's something I haven't done. I've made blues records, of course, as people know, but I haven't made a solo blues record where everything is just me basically doing everything. So, yeah. Um, yeah, it's it's been fun, you know. Good excuse to play the double bass for me and sing yeah. stuff like that. So I don't usually get to do. <laughs> um, we'll come back to that in a minute, but uh, the the record company will be upset if I don't talk about the the album coming out next week, uh, which is Sunset Suburbia, which uh, two EPs worth of songs had already come out. Um, yeah. Now that all all the songs are sitting together uh, in one unit on one album, are you happy with the way they? They all sit? Yeah, I mean, it's funny. Like, I still, I guess because um, I was talking to someone before about how um, I still can't uh, get used to the idea of, um, you know, having this so much freedom, I guess. Like, I still think of, like, albums, you, like, you start it, you finish it, you know, you, you sort of have, like, a rap, you know, you go, it's a rap, you know, we're done. And in this case, that kind of, I thought that was the case. And then I sent you know, my drummer home and my engineer home. And I mean, you know, not that that's like a travesty or anything to like do, do something after the fact, but I just felt like, what am I doing? You know, the album's done. And I started, I added another three tracks because, because I could, I couldn't help myself. Um, you know, those are ideas. Like, I guess the whole, 
uh, theme of the album was write it as you go. And that's what I did. It was like writing as I recorded. So I should have been kind of ready for the fact that, you know, uh, even though I thought it was done, there was still some more things that wanted to try to put up their hand to be on the record. So that's, yeah, in the last couple of months, I think, I mean, I, I literally was still recording stuff in like February and even up into March. So, yeah. Um, but then there was a point where I just thought, you know what, you know, like whatever it is coming down the pipe, just like leave it for the next record. You know, you have to kind of put a, like a, you do have to, I think Rick Rubin said something about, you know, knowing when to finish is like one of the most important things. There is no perfection. It's knowing when to say, you know, we're done with, with it's like, put the tools down. <laughs> yeah. um, you played the single comeback on The Sound, the new TV show uh, on the yeah. weekend. Uh, how important is it uh, to you as an artist to have TV, uh, uh, to have music on the TV? Oh, look, it's just like, it's, it just reminds me of how, what a void there has been. And it reminds me of how much we used to have. So and I think to have any capacity at this point is just, you know, is great. And I think people digest TV in a different way. It goes without saying, you know, like um, it, it, we're not the same culture that we were when, you know, we were watching Countdown or Hey, Hey, It's Saturday or Sounds Unlimited or whatever, all the music shows that we've had. I mean, personally, I used to start my Sunday when I was a kid, I used to start by getting to the TV, no matter where, where we were, I'd be stressing, like, I want to get home, I want to get home. I'd start with the show that was, I think, called Radio with Pictures in the afternoon. People go, what's that? I don't remember that. Well, people, I guess, wouldn't switch on to Countdown until Countdown was on that time, like 5 or 6 p.m. or whatever it was. But during the afternoon, where I lived in WA, they'd have all these music shows on that were not hosted so much. They were just literally just bands playing, like the old Grey Whistle Tests, stuff like that. And there was one in particular my dad used to love as well called Radio with Pictures. And we'd watch that um, leading up into Countdown. So my whole Sunday afternoon was all about just sitting in front of the TV, watching people with guitars and drums and basses and whatever. And just like, I, you know, like fantasizing. Um, when I wasn't watching that on TV, I was drawing pictures of amps and guitars and stages and stuff. I just, I wanted to be in that picture, you know? So it, everything went pretty pretty you know well when i think about it for me in that sense of like my brother left me an amp when he when he was went off to europe when i was like 14 he left me a vox ac50 he left me his p bass then my sister and brother bought me a, a cheap albeit but the most coolest electric guitar in the world because it was it was my first electric guitar um an ants and melody maker junior and then i went and bought myself an overdrive pedal and you know i I, I had toys, I had the tools um, in my bedroom and there were still all these music shows on TV. So I guess, yeah, the, the way, you know, generations now digest it's through YouTube, of course. Um, we're not sort of strapped to kind of like, quick, run to the TV. Oh, damn, I missed it. We've got things like iView and stuff like that. We can watch it anytime we want on demand. And so, but just to have that content and more importantly, on a weekly thing to have something that actually talks about things that have happened that week um, and just be like actually relevant to what is happening that month or that year is really important. It really is. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm so excited that, um, that it's, it, that, you know, we have a platform like this and I'm hoping that other networks will like look at it and go, you know what, we could do with one of those as well. Let's, let's do something, you know, there's room for everybody and get back to that kind of, thing that we had where music is, is on the menu and it's not like, oh, that doesn't rate, you know, reality TV shows rate or whatever, you know, but that doesn't rate. I just, I don't believe that. I really don't. Yeah. yeah. You know, you the choir, so. Yeah. Um, you are playing some uh, limited uh, capacity shows. You've got a launch of the album. Yeah. Um, have you had to rethink the way you're going to play this album live? I, I, I think of a song like, in reverse which has got a lot happening in the background um yeah. have you approached playing that in this situation uh, well thankfully that song is it's it kind of rolls out like a folk song as well and when i was writing it it was kind of like just kind of a pretty chilled out folky kind of vibe and then 
when it came to making it, when I just, you know, I picked up the P bass and that's when it, things changed, you know, I found that and that's, that kind of changed the whole, it was like guitar became less strummy and more like just playing sort of a supporting role with the bass, the whole song became bass dri driven, but I can flip it back to being sort of the folk, the kind of like troubadour around the campfire again, you know, because that's where it started. You know, I, li I like to always, you know, lean into the song when I'm having to do them in a solo way. It's like, okay, what have I got to work with here? Okay, I don't have that. I don't have that cool sound. I don't have that drum. I don't have this. I don't have that little wee, you know. So I've got to lean into the song. It's like, what have I got here to work with at the end of the day? A song. So, yeah. And that's, that's I guess, what I, you know, have to lean into. But having said that, you know, I've become more and more prone to kind of like uh, leaning, away, leaning away from, oh, I'm going to do it in a strummy sort of acoustic guitar version and think, you know, fuck it. I'm like pick up an electric and just like play the part off the record on electric and leave the rest kind of like as, as a blank picture and let, let the audience fill it in. And it's like, why not? Why can't you do that? There's no rules, you know, like it's still get the song's still going to take flight, you know? Yeah. It's just in your head, you've got these limitations. I think a lot of musicians think, oh, you know, oh shit, the sky's going to fall out unless I have that sort of like four on the floor or whatever it is, you know. And that, you know, that's just a comment that I see with people with stomp boxes. Not that I have anything against stomp boxes, but I just see people using them when it's like, I can tell they're like, you're just feeling inadequate there. So you think, oh, if I step on the stomp box, it's going to make people. And it's, it's the irony is it, it turns it into this like almost like acoustic singer songwriter doof doof or something like when you listen to it outside a, a venue especially it's just so like monotonous it's like you're actually making the song really boring <laughs> and people don't give a rat's off if, the, if there's a kick drum or not just play the song and if you want to use that stomp on one of those songs that has a great effect yeah go for it but don't feel like you need to put stomp in every song you know it's just yeah that's just a, an observation Yeah, there's a couple of originals. There's one, um, funny enough, uh, Ross Wilson sent me an email. He's, he was doing a bunch of uh, sorting because they moved. And um, him and his wife were like, you know, setting up house and he found a box of cassettes and he found this song that we wrote in 91, which is right around the time I was making the transition of being in the band uh, to a solo artist. So I did a bunch of demos and it's a song that, he tried to write with me. Uh, he tried to write sort of uh, um, at the time. He was like, I want to write about your life story. Okay, tell me about where you grew up, blah, blah, blah. Kind of like a Johnny Be Good tailored for me <laughs> and all about being a guitar slinger. And um, yeah, I just remember like being pretty in love with the song. And then of course, you know, I started making Head Fidelity and the stylistically it just didn't fit in. And so it went just off the table and um, it, it couldn't have come like back into the light at a better, better time because he sent it to me and I just thought, holy crap, you know, um, this is perfect for this album. I'm just going to have to rework it and give it the same flavor and everything. So, yeah, and I just really wanted to, just out of, you know, sheer um, fanboy, I just thought how cool would it be to have a song by Ross Wilson on this blues album, being that he's like a, you know, godfather, the OG of, of Australian blues to me. Um, yeah and just i love how ross has, has he's out of so many musicians that i know he definitely takes the prize for being organized with everything that he's done he's really got a like an incredible encyclopedic um you know kind of curating sort of uh nature which is beautiful because i completely forgot about it what guitars you've been gravitating to for this new project um, mostly the harmony rocket this guy here because uh, it's got those gold foils and the wooden bridge just gives it that really short blunk, blunk, and through an amp that my friend up in uh, Innisfail, George Dahlstrom made, which has got a, a valve tremolo. And I love kind of putting it on quite fast, but subtle depth. So it's, it's just sort of there all the time. It gives this beautiful, I hate this word because I use it all the time, three dimensional sound, but it actually, because I'm using one mic on it and it's, you know, mono. But it just really has this dimension um, and uh, just gives it that little bit of movement. And 
course, it's a deluxe sort of design. So I love, you know, I love two six V six valves any day, and they're vintage ones, which is really nice. Um, going through a blue Celestian speaker and just over there in the room with a with a room mic on it, a ribbon mic. Um, that sounds pretty cool. And using that and just like one mic, mostly this SM7, and I've got this little uh, Philips mic that I bought on eBay for like 200 bucks and just thought it was like, it said, someone said, uh, great for harmonica, which it, I'm sure it is, but it's actually the most, like, it's got so much beautiful detail. It's a dynamic, it's not a condenser, but it's got this detail like a condenser. It's like, how could you discount it just being a harmonica mic? It's, it's you can put it on anything. So I mean, yeah, recording, it's like a one mic album, mainly because I'm just lazy. I can't be bothered like getting another mic set up. It's just like, okay, I've got to record snares now or, or a kick drum or whatever it is that I'm putting down. Shakers, double bass, cello, whatever it is, just grab the one mic and just put it through my API um, mic pre and straight into the UAD, even though I have a whole fully blown HD Pro Tools rig over there with like walls of mic pre's and everything. It's just... Um, for the one guy sitting in a chair slapping things down, this proves to be really good for me at the moment. Yeah. How fussy are you with your guitar takes? Um, uh, you have to get them fresh uh, or? You know, it's all about the vibe as far as like, it's for me, I've, I've, I have become really good at knowing, um, you know, what's going to serve the purpose. It's like, get the right balance, get the right mix. That's really, really important. It's just like when I'm producing people, it's like asking them, like, what can I do to help? You know, are you hearing enough of this and hearing enough? Because some people don't need, know how to articulate and they just, you know, it, it's the whole take is being hindered by that. So it's all about getting the right balance and um, yeah, of like what's inspiring. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's pretty, it's pretty fun. Like, um, like, playing the double bass, for instance, with, with, with a mic on it and, you know, you got the cans on, you can feel the double bass kind of resonating all through your body and you're sort of like, you know, it's like it's giving you a hug, you know, and you're playing it and, it's, and you got it coming through your cans as well. It's just like, wow, this is fun. You know, that's, that's kind of, um, yeah, that's just like how much fun can a man have by himself? <laughs> it's like... I think to myself, God, you know, I'm like, this is ridiculous. I'm like literally up here on my own and making it. And it ends up sounding like a whole band. It's, it's just bizarre. But when I think, you know, the records that I grew up with by Stevie Wonder, that, you know, being told as a child that that was one person making all that noise and you go, what? You know, so it, you know, it shouldn't be a bizarre concept, but it is still bizarre even to me, the person doing it. So yeah. what, are, what are the revised plans for 2020? Um, well, I'm just doing like, it looks like just some local New South Wales, uh, reduced numbers shows a couple in uh, October, and November, some more Lazotte shows into Christmas, which is traditionally what I always do around Christmas time as I slide into my brother's home base, as I call it, um, up in Newcastle. And then we're supposed to be doing the red hot summer. Uh, when I say we're supposed to be, I've been booked to do the red hot summers tours with, uh, Chris Cheney, um, the Bull Sisters, and Jimmy, of course. Um, and uh, yeah, really, really hoping that's going to happen. But we'll just have to wait and see. It's no point in freaking out. It's just, it is what it is. If it gets moved, it gets moved, you know, along with a lot of stuff. So um, I've, at this point, um, moved my whole band tour for the album. Like, it's almost like the album is or at least from like an overseas artist where you'd have to wait a year for them to tour, which was, you know, growing up, that was always the case. You'd buy an album and then go, I wonder if they're going to come and tour. Oh, a year and a half later, they finally make it. So if, to, for fans, they're just going to have to, you know, be happy with the album, which is kind of cool because I feel so many times we've gone out and toured just when the album's coming out and you feel like they haven't had time to digest it yet. So it'll be kind of nice touring next year on the album after it's been in circulation for literally a year. I think it'll be cool. Right, Diesel, it's been great to catch up. I'll, I'll let you get back into it. Thanks, buddy. Cheers.